your backyard beekeeper here on a special edition on honeybeemade.tv. I'm alongside the small Chef 11, Matthew Conger. Thank you so much, Bert. I am so happy to be here, and we're going to be working with his honey today on his channel. And what are we going to do today? Today we're going to be making a pork chop with a honey glaze, and it's going to be awesome. Now, what is the cooking method on this, small Chef? We're going to be cooking it on a pan searing it, sautéing. It's one of the methods of cooking. And this is what honey bee made honey looks like. <laughs> this stuff is freaking delicious. <laughs> All right, so we have our lemon here. We got to cut it in half. It calls for a quarter cup of lemon juice. So when you want your lemon to be squeezed, I use tongs, these tongs. And these are a little bit heavier duty in the kitchen. So if you use yours at home, just be careful with them. You take it and you squeeze it over what you want. Well, that's nifty, Matt. And you squeeze it the other way. You get all your juice out. And then this you can throw away. And do it again. And then turn it and squeeze. And there we go, we have our lemon juice. Very cool. And now you can just pick the seeds out with your tongs. Well, I would never thought of that. I would have used my fingers. <laughs> <laughs> so we have lemon juice here. What are our other ingredients for this? Sea salt, crushed black pepper, garlic, and soy sauce. And then now we're gonna add our honey to here. We just need a quarter cup of the goldenrod honey. This stuff is awesome. It took a lot of bees to make that, sir. I bet it did. <laughs> All right, so now we have everything together. We have to season our pork chop, and then we'll put the rest of it into our pan over here that I have. So the order to season these, we gotta put our salt and pepper on there. Every time I see you work with meat most of the time, you're always seasoning it with salt and pepper. Now really, what does the salt and pepper do to the meat? The salt enhances the meat. It gives it a better flavor to it, and it helps with the crispy crust on the outside. It gives it a nice little crunch to it. So if I was to interpret what you're saying, it heightens the flavor of the pork, so pork tastes more porky. Exactly. Oh. It just gives it a way better flavor than just having plain old pork with no salt and pepper. You have to have that. And I never thought about the texture on the outside with the sea salt. Never thought about that. All right, so now we gotta just make the sauce up. It's really easy, guys. You pour all your ingredients into this bowl. Just pour all your ingredients into this bowl, mix it together, and you have your sauce. So we're gonna throw our lemon juice in here. We're gonna get our honey in here. Oh, get every drop of that honey oh, in man. there. That is looking delicious. Pure sweetness. This is where tongs come in handy again. Yeah. They, this. they double as a rubber spatula. <laughs> And then we just add in our garlic. Can you imagine the combination of sweet soy, garlic, and salty soy? And then a little pepper. And that's it, guys. Now we got a whisk. <laughs> There, now it's all mixed together. Now we can use this in our dish. And we're gonna use this a little bit later on, but first we gotta start cooking our pork. And this is gonna be amazing when it turns out. Cause remember, everything's better on the B side. B -side. <laughs> so Matt, tell me, what exactly is pan searing? Well, Bert, it is taking the meat and you lay it down in the pan and it sears the outside and it makes it caramelize. You're caramelizing the protein that you're putting into your pan. So we got to make sure the pan is hot. If it's not hot, it just doesn't work. It has to be hot because if it's cold, it's not going to sear. It's just going to heat up the outside very slowly. So to get a proper sear, you must have a high heat and your oil in there and then put down your pork and you'll hear it sizzle. So now we're going to add the oil to our pan. Okay. 
Now, if you don't know how to make sure this is hot, you can always make sure and test with a little bit of water, put a little bit in there and it'll sizzle. Because if you don't know if it's hot, you don't know. So, and then another the reason you can tell is if it starts smoking a little bit, it's ready to, to start pan searing. And guys, this kitchen is not your average kitchen at home. This is a commercial kitchen. This is awesome. Everyone likes seeing what a commercial kitchen looks like. This is what it looks like, guys. You have a 12 burner range here. You know, at home you might have two, but this is commercial. This is where the things happen. Are we hot enough there, small chef, or do I need to be a little bit more patient? It takes a little bit of time, but we're just about there because we're smoking a little bit. I don't know if you can see that. So now we can lay our pork in there and get it going. Oh, that's what you want. And make sure you have a big enough pan for it as well. Again, you want it to smoke a little bit because that'll be the highest point of it. Because if you let it go beyond that, then it's called that's called the flash pan and catch fire. Now guys, order to tell if this is ready to be flipped over, it should release from the pan. See how it comes up real nicely? It doesn't oh, stick. Nice. Look at that nice color. And you oh, call that, and you call that caramelizing. That's caramelizing outside. Wow, look at the color on these two. Beautiful, just beautiful. It is beautiful. Now what we're doing is we're only pan searing this for about, I'd say, a minute on each side. Then we're going to take it out of the pan. Yes, it's still going to be raw, but we want to do it so we can put our sauce in there and deglaze the pan. Deglazing is taking that brown stuff from the bottom and bringing it up, and that's where all the flavor is from. Oh, yeah. Deliciousness. Deliciousness with a capital D. <laughs> What, now, I'm getting excited, uh, Matthew, so when do we have the sauce? So it's just about ready. We're going to pull these out of the pan. We're going to take a look at the other side, and wow, look how beautiful that is. That is beautiful. It is beautiful. Now, you're, now how set, do you, is it done yet? Or? No, these are not done. These are completely raw. We want to take them out, set them on the side for now, and now we're going to add our sauce to it. It's a beautiful sight. Now we add our sauce to the pan. Take it away from the fire. Oh, I love that sound. So what's going on here? So it's deglazing the pan deglazing. a little bit. Tell us what deglazing is. It's taking everything that's on the bottom of the pan and bringing it up into the sauce. That's all flavor right there, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, yes. Deliciousness. Now we want to turn down our heat to a low heat so we don't burn our sauce. I can smell the honey. <laughs> now we want to add our pork back to the pan so it can cook in the sauce and absorb all that honey flavor Ooh. from the soy and the garlic. Now, well, I can really smell that honey. Now, how do you how do you know when this is done? Well, you can either temp or take the temp of it with a thermometer. Which if we like. have one of these. And you can also do it by touching it by feel, because I've done this for so long, I can feel when it's done. And when it's done, the temperature be, should be at 145 degrees. 145. That's a medium. And it's okay to pork, uh, okay. cook pork at 145? Yes, it is. Science has gotten it down to 140, but I like mine about medium, so 145. And some people think it needs to be well done. You can do it well done, but I prefer medium. This day and age, we don't have to do well done, if I'm not mistaken. No. Back in the day, back in the day, there was a, a worry of trichinosis. Yes. And, and it was from the food that the pigs were eating, or am I wrong on that? I don't know if it was about the food, but I know that people were very scared about getting sick from their pork if it was not well done. But now we have the science in this day of age where we can get it down to 140 degrees, and it can be medium, and it's safe to eat. USDA, USDA regulations probably helps with that. Yes. Yes. Awesome. Now, are you going to temp it today, or are you going to do it by feel? We can do both. All right. Show people what it's all about. Right now, the pork is, I'd say, medium rare to rare right now. Definitely medium rare. Now, if you if you go to a supermarket, you get really thin pork chops. This will go very very fast. But if you get a thicker pork chop, it'll take a little more time. These are you know kind of the middle of the road right now of thickness. Oh. 
And you might say, I'm turning this a lot. You know, I'm not turning a lot. It doesn't matter how many times you turn it because you want to turn it more often because then it keeps the juice inside of the pork. It's not coming out of the top. And we like moisture when it comes to meat. Uh, definitely, yeah. yes. Because you do not want a dry piece of pork. I absolutely hate dry pork. I don't like dry beef. I don't <laughs> like dry burgers. I don't like dry fish. I'm right there with you. I don't like dry any protein. <laughs> I can't think of anything I like dry. Maybe my wine, but that's about it. Oh, <laughs> small shaft. That was a good one. Mm. <laughs> it smells freaking delicious. It does. It oh. smells wonderful. I can smell the honey. Oh, I can smell the honey. A you little can, bit of that soy. Yep, you can, it, oh, yep, you smell, you can smell the honey first, and then the back up of the soy. You can just oh. come right after it. It's so fragrant. We can probably take a temperature of that one. All right, sir. We're looking at what what temperature again, sir? 145. We're only going to go in halfway. Yep. We're at 141, two, three, four. We're at 145 45. for that one. Should we just check another one just go in right case? Go right ahead. Some of them might be a little different. Yeah, this is only about 130 still. So we want to take this pork chop out and we'll put it on our plate. Well, we'll put it to this. We'll take this pork chop out and we'll put it to the side for now. Now, I'm gonna say this one's about ready and this one's about ready. You want to tempt that one? No, of course. It's gonna be real close. Oh yeah, 150. She's done. Yep. Put a fork in her. She's done. Oh man, <laughs> that's what I'm talking about. I can smell that. It smells really delicious. This one's ready too. All right, so now you just want to turn off the heat and we'll use the sauce to put on top of our pork. All right, so the way we're going to plate this, if you had like mashed potatoes, you could put it here and then put it on top of there, but we don't have that today. So we're just going to plate it by itself with some applesauce. I absolutely love pork and applesauce together. I've seen your, all your videos and you, you do a wonderful job of taking simple foods and presenting them beautifully. So what you have to do, because it's, you can't always have expensive foods at the home, you know, you have to keep it simple and easy. That's how I like it. Put your applesauce on the plate like that. Do it on this side, put it in a pile. And then you take it, your spoon, and go like that. And again with this one, and there you go. Something simple and easy to do, but yet delicious. That is awesome. All right, guys, if you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up. And if you're stopping in the first time, again, please smash that subscribe button down below. And that's how we do it on the B-side. Hey, what happened? Who turned out the lights? Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh.